We're good? Yeah, oh, hey, is it streaming? You, no way. <laughs> okay, you know it never gets old. I'm going to get rid of the six-foot stick. Hey, everybody. It's Friday. That's right. It's noon. Correct? I'm looking at the, it's noon. Yep, we're noon, baby. It's Festool Friday, and that means what, Minnie? Festool Live. Boy, I'm so glad we're scripted, eh? Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna let's announce the room really quick. Over here we have Big D. Hey everybody! Behind the camera, you know who it is. It's Chris the Unit Siebert. We have here on the whiteboard Mini Mini. Down below we have Spacky. Sparky. Say hi, Spacky. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, That's all good. we're gonna get. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it never gets old, I'm telling you. And, hey, online today, we have Garrett Sato. He will answer all your questions. He's working remote for us. I want to say, give you a big shout-out. You're our number one utility player, Garrett. We love you. Keep up the great work. Woo! Boy, do we have an episode for you guys today. Okay, episode number what? 66. S Route 66 today, baby. Okay, and guess what it is? It's all the questions we get over the years on, hey, what are some basic tips on maintaining your tools? Now, what's really important on this topic today is I've selected quite a few different tools because people have asked me, hey, how do I do this? How do I do that? The only thing I'm not going to do is talk about calibrations. That may, if they allow us later on this year or next year, to do some calibration videos with you. Not sure yet, but we're still talking about it. So, long story short, Let's shorten it and let's get to work. Okay, so that's the question that we get, and I'll say this over and over. Uh, and I always drill down this question all the time because someone says, "Hey, uh, I think my blade's dull," or "Hey, um, when I'm ripping with my TS55, it's a little sluggish," or "I'm getting some burning." So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to sell <laughs> – Gary, you probably don't like this. I'm not going to sell you a new blade. I'm going to tell you to clean it. And this, over the years, has been like a <laughs> epiphanal moment for a lot of folks. And it's really simple. You take the blade off. I don't – I use just a simple, simple uh, uh, thing I get uh, – cleaner and I just it's non-toxic because I like non-toxic stuff and like Rick has always said to me let the cleaner cl do its work so I'm not going to just spray it on and wipe it off what I'm going to do is I'm going to agitate what I use and there's a bunch of different non-toxic cleaners out there I use crud cutter but they're simple green you can get it anywhere but what I will tell you is this is I borrowed this from my wife Mary Ann today it's her toothbrush okay <laughs> And Marianne, I'm not returning it to you. I promise. Okay. You better buy I a new instead one. Instead of throwing out toothbrushes, I save them because this is a great tip that I've given people over the years. What you want to do is agitate that cleaner on that front carbide like this. See how I'm going like this? That cleans the front face of the carbide, and I just let it sit there like that as I go around, and you'll see it. It's just coming really nice and clean. So what happens is on the side of the carbide, you get pitch buildup. Okay, that's what causes the burning. It creates more resistance in the curve. Now, the other thing, too, because this is the 42 tooth blade that comes with the TS55, the corded version, okay, is you just let it set there like that, and you'll see how it just cleans. And what I'll do is I'll let it set there for about five minutes. Now, what I'll do one of a couple of things. If I'm on a job site, I'll just take some a rag like this and clean it, okay, or wipe it off. But sometimes, like here in the train center, I'll take it. I'll take it to the utility sink and wash it off. I make sure it really dries. And then what I do is I just take this stuff. This doesn't have any silicone in it. It's a Teflon coating. You can get a bunch of different blade lubricants. I just use this stuff. And I spray it on there. And I buff it. And I put it back on. And I'm going to tell you what. It's a night and day difference. Now, what blades? Of course all blades. You got... Your 55s, you got your cordless version, uh, that's a new 1.8 curve. Your 75 blades, and I use it, and I clean up my Capex blades all the time with this. So hopefully that was a, a good tip for you. Clean your blade. A lot of people ask for us to do videos on it. I've done several videos on blade cleaning. 
on Instagram. Okay, now, <clears throat> when I was setting up this, um, this week, somebody called me when I was setting up this episode, and I said, you know what? I'm going to put this on the episode because there's a lot of different ways people change the splinter guards, okay? I have, oh my God, or cut their splinter guards. I'm going to show you how I change it and the way I was taught to change it. Okay, now, very simply, watch. You pull the splinter guard off. <laughs> okay, now, the question always comes out, when should I change my splinter guard? When you are unsatisfied with the quality of that crosscut that you're getting, you're getting splintering, replace the splinter guard. Okay, but I'm going to show you some tips and tricks with this. I'm going to take it out. I always get the, the 5,000. Uh, this comes in 1,000 lengths, 1,000 millimeter lengths, and uh, 5,000. Oh, no, 1,400 and 5,000. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it out here. Okay, and it's pretty simple. What I'm going to do is get a rough dimension here like this. Watch, and I'm going to cut it or chop it just like this. Make sure you have a, a sharp. Okay, well, I'm going to set that aside. How's everything going, Big D? Good? Looks good. Okay, so there's a couple of things about this. See how I have my rough adjustment like this? I'm just going to take this and get that little schmutz off of there. Okay, and I'm going to peel this. And this is some tips that you need to know. In other words, people ask, and the question this week was, this person's splinter guard was peeling off. And I go, and you'll see how I do this, and maybe this will make sense to you. You never put it to the end like that, or the very end. Because if you stand this up, guess what? That's going to peel off. Okay? What you want to do is leave a little, I usually do about an eighth of an inch, and I make sure, you see how you have this aluminum extrusion right here? It pops up. I put it right up against there. Now, you're going to see how I'm tacking this on. And I think this is the part that I think, I, I think a lot of the reason people have problems with splinter guards is as I put this on like this. Okay, now watch. I'm going to cut it an eighth to a sixteenth out. You don't need that extra on there. Okay, and I'm just going to take that and put it right there. Now, somebody may say, hey, that's how I do it. I'm not finished. What you want to do is, you see how I took this? And let me show you. I go like this, like this, like this, and like this to put it on initially. That's how I've seen people put on splinter guards, but that's a no-no. It's like it's like taking a, doing a mica top. You have to roll the whole thing out so you have adhesion across the whole strip. So what I like to do is I like to take a domino. You can take a piece of wood, anything. And I always start in the middle, and I go like this. Just like this, and then I do it in this direction, just like this. Okay? I'm basically rolling it on. But you don't have to get fancy. I will suggest you get a Domino XL so you have the larger tenons. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. You like that, Mini? All right. So there you go. And when I stand it up, it'll stay just like that. Pretty simple, I hope. Okay? There's some, just some, that's guide rail maintenance, that's track saw maintenance. Here's one that's wicked simple, and I get this. This used to happen to me all the time. I love these clamps, the clamping elements, okay? But I would get hesitation on this head. So what I learned over time is I started feeling right here. Because of the way this bites down, see right here, it bites down on here. Over the years, you get this slight knurling, okay? So what I like to do, and it's just super simple, I just knock it down with some sandpaper. And may I suggest granite soft roll? 240. <laughs> okay, 240, right? And I just knock it down like that. Heck, I even do it on my clamps right here. I even do it on my hold down clamp for my capex. Because where it bites down, you have that little nerd. And you ha we have to use this type of steel so you get it to bite down and get registration on there. And then what I'll do is I'll take a, a rag. And I'll put some light machine oil on there, and I'll just go like this, and that will make it perfect for years to come. So there's another quick maintenance tip for you, and that's simple on the clamps. Now, another one that we get, or I want to point out, is the Rotex sander, or 
any Santa. And in Sanding 101, I think it was we did, Mm -hmm. I always will point this out because I saw somebody do this one time and I just blew me away. I went, that makes too much sense. Okay, when I change grit on a Santa, I don't care what Santa it is, I always vacuum the pad. If we if we could get in here, Big D, can you get a, a zip on this one? Mm-hmm. Okay, see this right here? See these little tidbits on here? <laughs> That's a good word, right? Little splinters, some debris, or as I like to call it, debris. Okay, <laughs> what I like to do is just, you have your vac there with you, right? Your CT, clean the pad. Okay, that way there, that debris doesn't stand a chance to what? When I put my grit on here, especially the higher grits, okay, you, that way there, that part or that little debris doesn't stand a chance of transferring through the paper. That could cause a swirl mark. So always vac your pads in between grit change. It just makes sense, right? Same thing in any sander, even the Planex. Okay. We're rocking and rolling. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for CT maintenance. Check this out. Question all the time is, how do you clean a filter on a CT? <laughs> okay, so I, in years ago, I used to take compressed air and blow it through the filter. And then you would turn on your regular shot vac. I'm talking about regular shot vac, right? And guess what would happen? If you see dust coming out of the exhaust port, you have a hole in your filter. So don't use compressed air to blow out your filter because, especially a HEPA, because guess what happens? You blow a hole through there and it's no longer a HEPA. Okay, so our suggestion always is you take out the filter Okay, out of the carriage and just take it over to the dumpster or a, a trash receptacle and just tap it out. Okay, it, that makes too much sense. And these will last a long, long time if you maintain them like that. Okay, and you just put it right back in like this. That was a pretty clean filter. But always periodically check that. And I do it religiously when I'm changing a bag. I just take that filter and just <laughs> tap it off to the side. And it just, they, they do last a long time, I'll tell you that. Okay, what's next? Woo! Let's do domino maintenance. How's that? Good. Okay. So this happened to me my first year at Festool. And I said, man, we got we to gotta keep doing this. Okay. Does Festool offer blade sharpening? No. No. <laughs> That's a good question. How... What do you mean, the foam? Oh, how do you get the foam off? Okay, so when I remove the splinter guard, uh, where are you? Uh, I threw it away. <laughs> okay, okay. so when I remove the splinter guard, I'll answer that question because that may be because they have the uh, – <laughs> this is funny. Somebody asked me recently on a show, wow, when are you coming out with that new splinter guard? I went – uh, 2009. <laughs> okay. If you have the black splinter guard. When I pulled this off, you see the little sticky sticky? Okay. That comes off with it. Because one of the problems we had or situations we had with the old one, it's black. Okay. We've had this for quite a few years. 12 years. Um, what happens is you're left with uh, some res. res- residue or as I used to call it the schmutz on there so what you do is I've always just taken a razor blade and just scraped it off before now you'll notice I didn't there was a little bit of sticky still on there I don't clean it off at all Um, and the reason I don't clean it off is because I've used different uh, like mineral spirits I've used I've used um, isopropyl alcohol, lacathena, and I know it flashes off, but it just, maybe it's too clean, okay, so I, I learned early on, I just don't clean it anymore, I just put that right on there, and it adheres, I don't have really, I don't have any problem with it peeling off, okay, it's more making sure that the adhesion is along the whole split the gut. Okay, let's talk domino, because here's a situation I was having. Good questions, by the way. Okay, here's, a, here's what I was, I was experiencing early on, and then I was taught this, and I went, oh, my God, every single class I show people this. 
I must have shown this a hundred times over the last month at trade shows because I know you have situations like this and it's just, it's just simple, okay? See this? I'm setting, uh, say I'm setting the height of my plate, okay, to go on a reference space. Okay, see how I do this? And this is the lever that I tighten. Okay, see how it bottoms out right there? Okay, I would like to get a little more bite on that because what was happening in those early days is my fence was moving. It was Some people made a thing, they call it fence drift. Okay, so here's how you compensate for it because it's really simple. If we look right here, there's a posi drive number two screw right there in the end of this lever. See it? The only thing I'm going to suggest is you use a festival screwdriver. <laughs> hey, is that getting old? I don't think so. That's pretty good stuff. Okay, so so what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen that posi drive. <laughs> oh, man, he's snorting now. He's, oh, he's my good God. To go. Okay. Oh, you can't take any more, man? Okay, so what I'll do is look. You see how it's bottomed out on there? You see how this is hexed? And you see how that's a little stab pattern right there? I could take that, look, and move it up and get that extra bite. That eliminates what people are calling fence drift. And now I'll always double check that's still smooth that way. And I get that really positive lockdown. It works perfect. And guess what that works for? Right there. Okay, it works on the MFT rail clamp, same way. Always remember, there's always a possible adjustment when you're working with the Festool tools. Cool? And there you go. That is my tip for the domino today. Okay, so I'm looking at my list. Yes, I've covered that. Yes, I've covered that. Woo! Now comes the fun one. Let's go over to the Capex right over here. Okay, I'm going to turn on the laser okay no I'm not going to calibrate the laser because 90 percent 99.9 percent .9 of the time people want to calibrate the laser they don't have to okay it's simple let's look at the laser give me that Chris remember you have to use a Festool screwdriver okay see how that's really and this came about where I had a couple of dudes from uh, how do you say what was it they were from Chicago, and they said, your lasers are really crisp. I go, how, how old is your uh, KPEX? And they said, our KPEX, or plural is KPI. They're KPI. Uh, that was pretty good on huh, men. I love it when I can make men, men laugh. Okay, good. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Okay. <clears throat> they were having a problem with their KPI. And they, I go, so tell me what your laser looks like. They go, really thick. And I just looked at them. I go, did you clean the lens? And they were like, uh, there's a lens. So check this out. See this little piece here? That's a protective lens for or shield <clears throat> for the lasers. Okay, and those lasers, there's two of them. There's a left and a right, and are on spring-loaded carriages. So what I did is I showed them this. That should be the kerf right there in my blade. But sometimes this gets thick. Sometimes it gets fuzzy. Sometimes uh, my buddy in Vermont said, guess what? I, I, I'm sending my Capex back because I can't see one of the lasers. Once again, I asked, did you clean the lens? So there's the lens. To remove the lens, okay, let me, <laughs> our dry run, I had already loosened it. So you see what's holding it in is this little screw here. You don't have to take it out. You just do two or three turns, and that pops out. See that? And that'll get some schmutz on there. My God, I have a, a picture. I might have showed it in a former uh, Festool Live when I was doing the Capex. This was, his was covered up. He couldn't see the lens. So what I'll do, okay, is do this. You clean it like this with a microfiber rag, okay, and you put it back in, and that should work fantastic. My Capex at home is a 2006, and that laser is so crisp to this day. Because over, over the uh, years, I've always uh, maintained that laser lens. Okay? So, wow. I cover everything? Yes, sir. Oh, how do you how can you show how to properly close the older model CT Vax long life bag? Leaky corners for me. Okay, um, I don't have a long life bag 
here uh, the older one. Okay, I can explain it. Okay, and what it is is the long life bag is the one that sh you really shouldn't use a long life bag uh, for materials like paint removal or fine dust. The only time I'll recommend a long life bag is people who are going through a boatload of bags, but they're producing larger chips. Okay, that's how I've always been taught and to teach people about the long life bags. So in saying that, fine dust, the way it locks in is it has a, uh, a piece of plastic. It's a five millimeter bag. It's, uh, and it has a piece of plastic. And there's another piece of plastic that slides to uh, seal it. Over time, that piece that seals it uh, has a tendency to wear. So I don't know how long you've had your long life bag, the person who's asking this question. Um, but maybe it's time to uh, get a new one or get a new uh, bracket to seal it. But uh, I used to use it for uh, my Capex, and uh, it worked great. But when you're working with a Capex, it's still fine dust. So I was taking it, and I take it out to the dumpster and empty it, and I was breathing it. I'll never recommend a long life bag for fine dust. Okay, because you end up breathing it in the long run. I always will tell people, if you have an HL850, that's a chip-producing son of a gun. So what I'll always do is say, always get a long life bag, because those professional uh, hardwood guys doing a hand scrape, they're going through three or four bags in a, a morning to do a room. So that's, that's who I recommend the long life for. Now, I will go a step further on that. God, I haven't shown people long life bags in forever because I have cyclones. That cyclone is unbelievable. And that may be the same price as a long life bag. So we're, get a cyclone also if you're having a, a leaky bag. Okay. Shoot, Minnie. Um, what do we need to use to items? <laughs> okay. Uh... I got to be careful with this because there's a product that I use all the time for it. It's a light machine oil. But a lot of the times, uh, here, let's just step over. Let's go over here and I'll show you the domino. Okay? So, and the reason I have to be cautious on this, okay, is because someone will say, oh, he said to use this. And they go use an overabundance of it. And that's a huge no-no on any tool. I like to use lubricants that don't attract dust, that have a semi-penetrative uh, quality to it. Okay, um, so I'm just going to pop this off, and I think you're I did, I did this just so I could hear the pop. <laughs> okay, but oh, the first thing here is you'll notice, see this right here? I'm going to see if we can get a picture. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <clears throat> Mike went out. Those new cordless mics haven't been working well, have they? Okay, so what we'll do is I'll get this out of the way. Yeah. Okay. And hopefully I'm not tangled up. Okay. So, better, Big D? Okay, so what I'll do is you see these? These are fairly clean. And what I'll, I'll do is if I'm going up to someone's domino, and if it's not this smooth, um, it should be. Same thing with your routers, your Festool routers. I do the same thing. I maintain them the same way and my capex rods okay that the head shifts on i just did that again so i could hear the pop <laughs> okay first thing you'll look at your rods here and i will clean these completely and i use uh, mineral spirits to clean these okay just but guess what it's a rag that is not dripping wet in mineral spirits i want to get all the stuff off of them and then what i do is I'm gonna grab it because this is the product I use. I know it's not Festool, but it's a light machine oil. And uh, a little's a lot. Yeah. And the reason I wanna show you this, okay, when I say a little's a lot, when I do this, I spray it on here. So you can take some light machine oil, okay, and spray it on like that. That's all I need. 
okay? And then I'll take it in like this, and I'll go like this, and I'll go like this. That's all it takes, okay? Pretty simple. Now, what's also important about this, okay, is guess where I go with this? Because a little is a lot, right? I don't go and take that, that lubricant and spray it on there. And there's a lot of great products out there, believe me, okay? And I just do like this on the Capex, okay? Just like this. And if I periodically do this, this just makes it run so much smoother. Look at that, okay? And guess what? I'll take that and I'll do my 1,400 or, 20 or 1010 rods. But I always clean them first, okay? If there's any oxidation on the rods, which I don't have in here, but at home every once in a while, I'll leave a router out. Um, there may be a little oxidation on there. I take fleece, the Scotch-Brite uh, material we have, and I just buff them a little, takes the oxidation off, clean with the mineral spirits and put the PG on, and it works great. Light machine oil, but very, and when I say light, I mean a very light, light <laughs> application, okay? Uh, so there you go. Uh, just clean the pad. Clean the pad. Clean the pad. Take the pad off. Oh, the uh, plain X. All plain X's. Uh, I always clean the pad. Um, sometimes I know that's difficult. Okay, because you're, you're, you're in a room and you're getting it done. At least once a day, clean the pad. Especially if you're doing popcorn removal. Because with popcorn removal, some of those uh, harder uh, pieces get behind the between the paper and the pad. So clean the pad. But also, do general maintenance on it. Take that 5 millimeter wrench, remove that, and clean behind there as well. Okay? Just vac it out. It works great. Get a, a, a crevice tool or a, a, I use the, the round brush. And I just use that because that agitates behind there. This one. And I know where you can get it. It's a... Best tool. Okay, good? Okay. All right. <laughs> Great questions. This is kind of fun. Kind of fun. It's the best hour all week. Okay. As we always wrap this up, and this is, I think, Big D and Chris and Minnie and Garrett and Brent and everybody uh, watching, I didn't realize you guys watched to the end to hear me call out where you're from. <laughs> And boy, did I hear a lot at the trade shows. Oh, my God. So here we go. And it's, I got another question for you guys out there and gals. Is it because you know I mispronounce everything? <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying a little bit, a little bit. Okay. So, hey, there you are. Thank you, Ian, from East Yorkshire. I'm also going to call out Judah and Sailor and Nicole, who's in Italy. Woo! Love it. Okay. We also have Julian from Bury St. Edward, uh, Edwards, UK. Chris from Malta. There you are. Festool Live next year from Malta. I'm trying. Greeley, Colorado. Yolarvi, Finland. Southern California. <coughs> Safety Habba, Florida. Warren from Bativa, Ohio. Rio Rancho, New Hampshire? Mex New Mexico. Okay. Ooh, <laughs> that was an M, New Mexico. Yeah, I don't think there's a Rio Rancho, New Hampshire. Okay. Hey, Nebraska. Go Big Red. You know it. Kaya Lambi, South Africa. Steve from Island of Bermuda, Fenton, Michigan, the Netherlands, Brisbane, Australia. Zuli Doug from St. Angelo, Texas. Okay. Paul from Reading, UK. Hong Kong. Love it. Dan from DI Woodworking Class in Kingman, Arizona. Laylord. Connecticut, Zanesville, Ohio, Whew. Strongsville, Ohio, Midnight Millworks from Nashville, Roarman, Holland, Portsmouth, Rhode Island, Gordon from Edinburgh, Orange, Orange, Australia, Bright Grove, Ontario, Dawn from Albuquerque, Bozeman, Montana, Jeff from Bloomington, Indiana, Hampstead, North Carolina, Sweden, whoa, Michael from Edmonton, Raymond, Maine, Shawsville, Virginia, Quebec, Elk Woodworking from Dugsville, Georgia, go Red Sox, daggone it, you're awesome, whoa, go Sox, baby, Walla Walla, Washington, Toledo, Ohio, 
Crimson, New Jersey. No, that's not Crimson. That's Cinnamon Sin, New Jersey. It took me months to pronounce that. All right, so Tomahawk, Wisconsin. Andreas from Germany, how are you? Akaya, Finland. Aka, Finland. It's A-K-A-A, so it's Aka, ha, ha, Finland. Vince, Vinny, how are you? From Canadian Repair, we love you, brother. Quartz Hill, California. Waterloo, New York. Downers Grove, Illinois. Edmonton, Alberta. Oh, hi, Annie and Ralph. <laughs> Savannah, Spain. <laughs> That's my sister and brother-in-law. My brother-in-law is Iron Man. Okay, love you. I missed you. We had a wicked good time up there. Thank you, guys. And I got Adam from Union, Maine. You know, it did. Oh, it's still called home. Okay, I want to tell you, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Do you know we're actually starting to plan Festool Live 2022? And by the way, we're going to have some road time. We're coming to visit you, it looks like. We have Hawaii. That's Garrett. <laughs> okay, so I want to say it. We're back. Everything's good. We love you. Happy Labor Day to everybody here in the States. Because that's a U.S. And Canada. Canada's got labor. Okay, so hey. Everybody from the Great White North, happy Labor Day as well. We'll see you next week, next Friday. We got one heck of an episode planned, and it's going to be awesome. Avon, Indiana, of course. Minnie keeps writing these down, and I'm going to keep saying it. No, I'm not stalling. Thank you very much. Hey, happy Festool Friday from Festool Live crew. We love you. I, did I say I love you guys a lot? I love you. Sparky, you got anything to say? That's a wrap. You guys have a great weekend.